Hey, we give you the facts. It's not what you think. Popeye News Link. Young King. One yard. Bless. Good morning, Popeye. Grandma watch Popeye's every morning and every night. Greetings. Greetings, viewers and subscribers. We released two videos earlier this morning. And so far, the feedback has been overwhelming. A lot of persons have been reaching out to read the story about Jamari Smith. And please, no matter how small it is, Please try and donate something. Tammy, she's hoping to raise some money to carry Jamari overseas to get further treatment. And that cost is going to be a whole heap. There is also a cookout that will be held on Saturday, February 11th at Farm District. Now, even if you can't make it to the cookout, please try and buy a ticket. And over the next few days, I'm going to be reminding you about the event to be held at Farm. Now, there was also a lot of messages and expression of support for the bartender who used to work at that popular uptown Savannah Lamar bar. I have been contacted by a number of farmer workers who told me that they too have been through the same thing. Now, the young lady that I interviewed, I am sure she will soon get another job. In my view, she is willing to work. Now, in today's journey, we are now at Grangel in the parish of Westmoreland. We are heading towards Savannah Lamar. Continue to sit back, continue to relax, and continue to enjoy this journey with me. Now, the Betteltown police, they are carrying out investigations to find out how a man, his name is Mr. Loxley Bell. Mr. Bell, he celebrated his 73rd birthday last week, Wednesday, January 18. He was born in the year 19. 50. Mr. Bell, he was a farmer and he lived at Cedar Valley District in the New Roads area in the Betteltown Police area in the parish of Westmoreland. The Betteltown Police, they are carrying out investigations to find out how Mr. Bell met his demise. We are learning that Mr. Bell, he lived alone. He also suffered from diabetes and hypertension. Mr. Bell, he was last seen alive in the Cedar Valley community on Tuesday morning, January 24, about 9 o'clock. On Wednesday afternoon, January 25, about 2 o'clock, one of Mr. Bell's friend and neighbor, she went to his house to visit him. The front door for the house, it was open. Now, when this lady went inside, she saw her friend Mr. Bell lying motionless on his back on a bed. The police were called and when they inspected Mr. Bell, we are told that he was seen dressed in a grey shirt and grey underwear. He had what appeared to be minor bruises to his face. Mr. Bell, he appeared to have died from the previous night. Now, the police, they are awaiting a post-mortem to ascertain what really caused this 73-year-old farmer's death. The question is, did Mr. Bell die of natural cause or was he killed? Let's wait and see. In the meantime, the police are continuing with their investigations. Ah oh boy. Now, <laughs> talking about investigations. I carried a story on Monday of this week. It was about the death of a man named Mr. Roy Allen. I told you that he was beaten by residents and I had promised to give you an update to the story. Now, I did some digging and this is what I unearthed. Mr. Roy Allen, he said to be in his 50s. He was popularly known as Piney. It is said that Piney, he captured a piece of land at Whitehall in Negril, in the parish of Westmoreland, where he built a little touch house that he lived in. It is said that Piney, he also operated a car wash at the said spot. We are also learning that Piney, he was a rum head. And when he was under his waters, fiercer than Piney, you couldn't find. It is said that when Piney was drunk, if you mess with him, he's going to tell you anything that came to his mouth. Well, we are told that there's a guy in the same Whitehall community known as Jason. It is said that Jason, he's originally from Kingston or up the line. Now, some persons, they're asking whether or not Jason, he ran away from where he used to live and come to the grill because there are word on the street that Jason, if he's from Kingston or St. Catherine, wherever he's from, he was charged for a young girl or some young girls. Are you following me?
I hope you are. It is said that on Sunday, January 22, about 2.30 in the afternoon, Jason, he was throwing some stones at a dog. And one of the stones almost hit Piney. We are told that Piney, he then said to Jason, it looked like a F you want the dog for F. You know what that F mean, right? Yeah, man. So, remember I told you that Piney, he mouth saucy when him drunk. It is said that Jason, on hearing this, he flung a stone hitting Piney on one of his legs, causing a large wound. It is said that Piney's foot started bleeding like crazy. Persons assisted in tying up the bleeding foot, but no one tried to rush with Piney to the hospital. It was some time later that the ambulance at the nearby Negril Fire Station was called and Piney, he was rushed to the Savannah Lamar Public Hospital. But by this time, Piney had lost a whole lot of blood. He died about 11 o'clock Sunday night. So, let me ask you something. <laughs> I have some questions to ask. Right, yes, sir. Negril Police, how comes Uno a treat Piney's murder, so? How comes Jason came to the station, chat fat and come back out. And we no need to check out Jason if he's wanted in Kingston or St. Catherine and people of Whitehall. People of Whitehall in the grill. This incident took place in broad daylight and no for uno see it. Uno just go allow Jason to kill Piney and get away with it. Uno now give police statement so that he can be brought to justice. Remember this, you know. What you must know is that if him kill Piney and get away with it, what do you think is going to happen next? You are a family member, might be the next victim. Uno need to do the right thing. All I know, Uno see what happened and Uno know exactly what took place. Do the right thing. <laughs> Over in Nallis, in the parish of St. Catherine. That man on your screen, his name is Kerio Johnson. He is 49 years old and he lived at the Charlemont housing scheme in the parish of St. Catherine. Kerio, he was living in Canada for years. Kerio's father, his name is Mr. Trevor Johnson. Now, for the kids, the senior Mr. Johnson, he operated a hardware at Nallis. It is said that the senior Mr. Johnson, he got married a few years ago. He passed away in November, or thereabout in last year. He died from natural causes. His son, Kerio, he came home from Canada and he buried his father. Kerio took over the business and started running it. We are getting unconfirmed reports that Kerio and his father's wife, they went to court, re his father's estate, and Kerio, he was awarded certain things, including his father's hardware. Like I said, that information is unconfirmed, but we are getting it from more than one sources. We are told that yesterday afternoon, about 3 o'clock, one of Kerio's friend who is living overseas, he was on the phone with Kerio and Kerio told him that he was at the hardware. The friend was telling Kerio to be careful because the fact that he was the one running his father's business. He believed disgruntled persons would try to harm him. Well, less than three hours after that phone call, Kerio, he was standing in front of the hardware when a man walked up to him. The man pulled a gun and opened gunfire, hitting him in his upper body, killing Kerio on the spot. Now, PNL Patreon family, I'm gonna show you how this hoodlum dealt with Kerio. Watch out for that video. It is too grimy to show on YouTube. And we'll be coming back to this story. We are gathering some more details to bring to your attention. The mayhem. Now, in this next incident, this one took place yesterday afternoon. Thursday, January 26, 2023, about some minutes after 2 o'clock. It took place at the Gullyside pub at 13th Street in Tucker, in the parish of St. James. Now, this is what we are learning. A few persons were patrons in the bar. One of them is that man that you are seeing on your screen and that's the best photo I could get of him. His name is David Elliott but he was popularly known as Pogger. He is 29 years old. 
Also in the bar was that man on your screen. His name is Marlon Medley. Marlon is 30 years old. Another man, he is called Marvin. We are told that he's about 19 years old. He was also in the bar. Now, all these three men, they are from the 13th Street area of Tucker, near to where the bar is located. The man who owned and operated the bar was also there. He is said to be in his mid-30s and he is from another community. It is said that while they were in the bar, hoodlums attacked. The hoodlums opened gunfire at the men and made good their escape. Now, when the shooting subsided, it was realized that three of the men were shot. Poga and Marlon, they received gunshot wounds to their upper body, while Marvin, he received gunshot wounds to his left foot. Luckily, the man who operated the bar, he was not hit. All three men who were shot, they were rushed to the Cornwall Regional Hospital by residents where Poga and Marlon, they were pronounced D-E-A-D, -E whilst Marvin, he was treated and admitted. Hear this now. When this crime scene was processed, our information is that 20 9mm spin shells as well as 8.40 spin shells were recovered from the scene. So it's safe to say at least 30 bullets were fired because I am almost sure not all of the spent shells were recovered. The mayhem. The me so let me ask you something. <laughs> let me ask you something. You know, see how me are putting the work? Eh? This is our third video for today. Now, anybody doing YouTube, one video take a whole heap of time, much less three. I am putting in the work. And remember, me tell you, you know. Remember, me tell you. You can look out for any video on this channel. Sometimes we are going to catch you off guard. Remember me tell you, there is a whole lot more to come. So if you are over here watching the video, I ain't not touch on the love button as yet. Touch it now. And we are now over 155,000 subscribers. We are growing. Continue to grow with us. If you are here watching our videos and you are not subscribed yet, hit on the subscribe button as also. Hit on the notification bell. Then click all so that whenever we drop a new video, you will be the first to be notified. Now, in the final story for today, this one took place this morning. Friday, January 27, 2023, about some minutes to 8 o'clock. It took place right in the vicinity of the old Green Island Bridge at Green Island in the parish of Anova. We are learning that a man, his name is Jermaine Myers, but he was popularly known as Dunice. I have not yet ascertained his age, but Dunice, he's originally from Kingston. He was living at Kral District in the Green Island area of Hanover because he and some friends, they were doing some work on the construction site at the Princess Hotel at Industry Cove in Green Island in the parish of Hanover. At minutes to 8 o'clock this morning, do nice, he was on his way to work. He was walking along the old Green Island main road. On reaching the old Green Island bridge, a motorcycle rode up with two hoodlums aboard. The pillion on the bike, he brandished a gun and opened gunfire at Do Nice. Do Nice ran off, but the hoodlums, they chased him with the guy on the back of the bike still firing at him. He ran to the opposite side of the road, but he was hit. He subsequently collapsed and fell along the side of the road. The hoodlums, they then made good their escape on the said motorcycle. The police were called and when they arrived on the scene, do nice, he was seen lying on his stomach along the side of the roadway in a pool of blood. He had gunshot wounds to his upper body. We are told that when this crime scene was processed, eight 9mm spent shells were recovered from the scene. The mayhem continues blessed love everybody tell a friend for tell a friend for tell a friend about papa news link and pnl blog tv like subscribe and share quick silver sin if we just unite what a country this will be if we just unite jamaica live in unity if we just unite what a country this will Jamaica, oh Jamaica, me sweet Jamaica. Cry me 
Africans mash up Jamaica. Go Jamaica, me sweet Jamaica. I could have sun shine a rain. Jamaica, no problem, no pain. Good boy, them no coat can't tear. But me want me country back. Give me me country back. To the street and the lane. Everybody them start complain. Bloodshed, what a shame, what a shame. But me want me country back. Give me me country back. Cry me to mash up Jamaica. Criminals them a mash up Jamaica. Jamaicans mash up Jamaica. Oh, Jamaica, me sweet Jamaica. Cry me to mash up Jamaica. Criminals them a mash up Jamaica. Jamaicans mash up Jamaica. Oh, Jamaica, me sweet Jamaica. Jamaica, Jamaica, the land of the sun. Jamaica become now the land of the gun. East and north and south to me turn. Country and town man a play blood a run. Murder, don't you be able me hear them a murder. Jump!